A quiet watch, Constable? As I prefer it, Mr. Holmes. I'd like a word with Lestrade. You're not alone, sir. But the inspector is engaged, and he's left particular orders not to be disturbed even by you. Hello, Oggy. Anything doing? Not enough. Give people what they want and where's the thanks. But I'll forget my manners. Condolences on your brother's demise. Your expression is premature. Mycroft is alive. Oh, but near death, surely. I have it on the best authority. Your source is impeachable. Demand a refund. What more have you heard about the Diogenes Club explosion? A working stiff don't have time for idle chatter, Mr. Holmes. Even surmise always a price. On principle, I never purchase information. Perhaps you can suggest how we might overcome this scruple. Indeed, I can. Ante up a shilling and we'll play a little free card Monty for the tidbit. Best two out of three. You win, the info's free. Lose, it's yours for ten bob. Eh? It's been a pleasure, Mr. Holmes. Better luck next time. Luck, I suspect, has nothing to do with it. You can keep the shilling, but I won't pay more for useless information. Oggy, are you always plying your dubious trade? The rich can afford to rest, Mr. Holmes. A poor man must make brass win where he can. As you seem to appreciate a platitude, you might reflect on the one that declares that there is no rest for the wicked. Feel like being taught your business, Oggy? You can always try. Contrary to the adage, Oggy, the hand is not always quicker than the eye. Yours is prosecutably slow. Have a heart. Keep it to yourself. Here's a nugget. Two hard Irish lads was in this city, both of them familiar with the niceties of Jellignite and mean enough to use it. Trashing a fancy English club might just suit their fancy. Names? Whereabouts? No names. Suppose I tell the police that this game has never been on the square and that you've nicked them all. No need to get violent. I heard those boyos was looking for a party name of uh, Boyd something. A coal miner I heard. That's all I got, I swear. That may be what the police call a lead. I have to be somewhat more discriminating. Is Oggy still schooling you at Three Card Monte? The man's an unnatural wizard. I never win. I swear he could retire to Blackpool on the brass he's taken off me. It's a mugs game, Constable. But nobody wins all the time. You want to know the secret to Augie's success? Only slightly less than the Ripper's real name. Might I see Lestrade on the strength of it? The door is yours. Once inside, you're on your own hook. Fine. After Augie manipulates the cards, tell him to move away from the table. Say that if your card is not one of those face down, he's in for a stay at Pentonville. I guarantee you'll start to recoup some of your losses. He's been bombing a card, then. Some secrets are just too tawdry to tell, Constable. Sergeant, might I have a word with Inspector Lestrade? 
You might, Mr. Holmes, if he were free, but as you see, he's not. Dissipating his meager talents on trivialities, no doubt. You'd know best. If you wish to wait, you may take a seat. Sergeant, has the elderly female party become a permanent fixture? You might say, Mr. Holmes, she used to char here. Now she thinks we're guests in her parlour. Haven't the heart to disabuse her. When might Lestrade be available, Sergeant? I couldn't say, sir. She's been burning his ear for a longish spell and shows no sign of weakening. I got tongue lashed for interrupting. What's her problem? Claims her brother's being wrongfully detained. Flapdoodle, of course. But the inspector's going the extra mile. There been allegations of high-handedness. He may see Gregson looking over his shoulder if you take my meaning. May a patient's maladies be diagnosed from their ravings? A specialist might be able to. I'll wager alcohol plays a part in this episode. Is it current drink, a history of abuse, or a seizure? Hmm, it's a fair question. Note the particularity of his tics and gyrations. Hmm, they are suggestive. And the alterations of his complexion. An even better observation. I have been as previous as the police. The man is ill, some form of epilepsy perhaps. Sergeant, why is that man being held in the lockup? Nutty as the proverbial fruitcake, as you can hear. He's waiting for a lift to St. Mary's. What is the delay? That woman claims he's not bonkers. She says he's sick. She is indubitably correct, but how sick and from what? Sergeant, I believe your prisoner is ill. There's no doubt about it, Mr. Holmes. Mentally defunct, I'd say. Criminally insane. No telling what he'll get up to on the loose. I think not. He's an epileptic. Dr. Watson will support my observation. Well, I'm loath to contradict you, Mr. Holmes. But you'll say so, just don't cut it in this instance. The bloke's loopy. Sergeant, are you familiar with the Encyclopedia Britannica? The greatest collection of book learning on earth, my dear pal, we said. That as may be. I believe its articles on medicine are considered authoritative. Next to God, they're all the truth there is, sir. Pa said so. If you'd like to save the inspector's reputation from careening downhill and protect the yard from litigation for unlawful arrest, you should know of the latest research on epilepsy. Pay special attention to the sections on grand mal and psychomotor seizures. That man is sick. Jensen, the man in the lockup may be epileptic. Look up grand mal seizures in the EB and convey your findings to Inspector Lestrade.
Right away, Sarge. Guard, have the incarcerated gentleman cleaned up immediately and release him to his sister's custody. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Another scandal here would be damaging. You're finally ready to resume your duties, Lestrade? I appreciate your assistance on that medical matter, Mr. Holmes. But the arch tone is out of order. What can I do for you? Evidently nothing, even though there is more to the Diogenes disaster than the pathetic official examination has divulged. Suspicions are your trade, Mr. Holmes. Proof pays the bills in police business. Proof? I'll give you proof. If your people... We wondered, Inspector, if... I'm perfectly capable of speaking for myself, Watson. If you won't investigate the explosion further, you might at least assist me. How? Give me carte blanche at the explosion site and the morgue. Something sinister is going on, Lestrade, if only you had the wit to see it. I will ignore the insult in deference to your fragile emotional state. If you want to waste your time, I won't stop you. But you'll excuse me if I don't squander my department's resources to gratify your overdeveloped and theoretic suspicions. Without well-founded supposition, Lestrade, reason staggers and the mind dies. You might remember that. Forbes, I'd like to go inside. Please assist me. Until further notice, sir, the club is closed to members and guests. I'm not here for a scotch and soda. I wish to examine the premises. Impossible. Only authorized representatives of the constabulary are allowed inside. What are you playing at? You deluded martinet. You... you... Your attitude is deplorable, Forbes, but I suppose I must oblige you. I'll honor the inspector's request, the yard, CID and all. Respect for authority is the cornerstone of civilization. Must maintain discipline. Would have preferred a personal appeal. Indeed, I'll tell him you felt slighted. He's sure to be mortified. Did you happen to spy any suspicious persons lurking about earlier? I tolerate no loitering on my watch, Mr. Holmes. Members don't like it. If I so much as sniff a tradesman, I move them along sharpish. My brother wondered if the fire brigade might have missed anything. Nothing, Mr. Holmes. You've come in vain. Any items or circumstances that seem not in accord with a gas explosion? The brigade is satisfied that there's no evidence to the contrary. Any odd or personal effects discovered? No. 
Nothing of a private nature has been removed from the club. I'm sworn to protect members' property and I will perform my duty. Forbes, what happened after the explosion? Did you notice anything unusual? I was stunned. Not myself for a few moments. You saw no one on the street when you revived? No one except yourselves. Let's not tarry, Forbes. We'll go in now. I warn you that it's dark and nasty inside. That suits my mood down to the ground. And I remind you, touch nothing. Has anyone worked on the gas lines in the last day or so? Checked and bled by Midlands last week. All in perfect order. Like Inspector Lestrade says, gas accidents are the price of progress. Depend on Lestrade for a cliché in lieu of exercising his brain. The Lectio Facilior is fine for paleography, but it won't do for logic. The man's reasoning powers are abysmal. Do you remark anything odd about the entry, Forbes? Well, it's burned and soaked with water, isn't it? I mean, anything unexpected? No, the place is a mess. I'll have to clean it up. I've asked you not to touch club property. Put that back, if you please. Forbes, my brother's snuff box is not included in your purview. Do not make yourself an unbearable nuisance. Watson, where did we find Mycroft exactly? It was just here, Holmes, beneath his portrait. You swept him up in your arms as if he were a child. Your strength amazed me. Adrenaline, Doctor. Danger animates and strengthens as often as it paralyzes. Mycroft never travels far without his snuff box must have fallen from his pocket when he was struck down. Unlikely. His other personal effects were undisturbed by the explosion. What is your hypothesis? Any speculation would be less than idle. I imagine it was blown in from somewhere. The lid might tell a story. I'll keep the box as a memento. Touch nothing, Mr. Holmes. I'll have to charge your brother an assessment. Forbes, the lounge appears wrapped in morning bombazine. It hardly matters. There's nothing to see. You'll excuse me if I should come to a different conclusion? Suit yourself. Remember, 
touch nothing. Club rules must be enforced. Even in... Please don't put yourself out. We can get on by ourselves. You may think so. It's my job to monitor the activities of strangers. Watson, what do your feline orbs espy? Hmm. Outlines, Holmes. No real details. The smoke plays tricks with the light. Was your clock face near the grandfather, Watson? It was, Holmes. How did you guess? You know my methods, Doctor. I do not guess. I observe. I deduce. Anything of significance, Watson? Not that I can see, which isn't much. I'd like more of what you found, or your skill in finding it. I wouldn't call it skill, Holmes. It was dumb luck. Most men's modesty is a sham or an excuse, Doctor. Your modesty becomes you. Are you guarding the perimeter, Forbes? This seems the best vantage point, Mr. Holmes. Considering the upper story could collapse at any moment and crash down on our heads. What? Oh, right, yes. Out of harm's way. Very unstable. Another reason to touch nothing. Did the fire brigade uncover or remove any personal items from the room? They briefly combed through the debris. Discovered ashes, wood, splinters, broken bricks. A simple no would suffice. I'm reasonably familiar with the language. I don't suppose you have a bullseye lantern, Forbes. As it happens, I do not. I'm not surprised. Fortunately, we are not dependent on your effects. Did Sir Hubert expire in his chair? The old gentleman was lucky. Never knew what hit him. Lucky? Is there any predicate to murder victim more inept than lucky? You can't prosecute the gas board for an accident. Spare me your opinion, Forbes. He was murdered as surely as if he took a bullet to the brain. Have Sir Hubert's people been notified, Forbes? He had no family, Mr. Holmes. Outlived them all. The Diogenes was kith and kin to him these many years. Good tipper he was. I'll miss him. Your sentiment is touching. Forbes, were any of your own possessions lost in the blast? Not that I know of. Have you found something of mine? I'm not certain.
Mr. Holmes, I've told you, touch nothing. I could move it with my shoulder, but it's not worth being crushed by the falling rubble. Watson, do you have a bullseye? It's as dark as a rent collector's heart over here. I don't have mine, Holmes. Battery's gone. What do you need? I'd like to shed some light on the situation rather than curse the darkness. I put it to you, Forbes, that before the explosion, a man entered the club carrying a valise. No one could enter the club with a case without my notice. I am responsible and trusted. Your competence is not at issue, Forbes, but I promise, prevarication will ruin you. Now, could anyone have entered the club with a case? A stranger did come in while I was at my tea. Saw his head and shoulders as he walked to the lounge. Average sort of youngish gentleman, presentable. Had flat eyes like an animal. His party must have been out because he left a minute later. He's the only possibility, Mr. Holmes, I swear. Thank you, Forbes. That's very satisfactory. Come, Watson, let's carry on. If we must, Holmes. This is a deuced gloomy place. These timbers must be hewn. I'm no lumberjack, Holmes, and we have no saw. There's more than one way to fell a tree. Watson, might I have a word? What is it, Holmes? Do you see a way to dislodge that particular beam without loss of life or limb? Hmm. Remove it from a distance. But Forbes will be unhappy if you interfere with that pile. Then he must be distracted. Watson, I was just thinking of that embalmed armadillo. Do tell, Holmes. The military implications are momentous. Impenetrable armor plating, low to the ground. Indefatigable diggers. Perhaps they could be bred larger and taught to fire a cannon. I'll get on to the War Department, shall I? You might analyze the shelves. Was the destruction of the book selective or random, based on Babbage's principle of non-discriminating violent action? Uh, as you say, Holmes. Excellent, Watson. Excellent. Just a moment, Doctor. 
I'll superintend your activity. Mr. Holmes appears to have gone daft. Here's the little darling, unexpected and therefore most interesting, but an expert would find it even more illuminating. I believe we exhausted the possibilities of this location, Watson. I hope that you have taken more away from here than I. The fumes are making me woozy. I hope you're satisfied. You'd be the last to know, Forbes. Matron, I would like to see my brother, Mycroft Holmes. Your desire and hospital policy do not happen to coincide. Hospital policy be damned. He's in a precarious condition. Language, Mr. Holmes. Don't make me call the police. Why this animus? Is it that incident with the bedpans? Do you still hold a grudge for that student prank? Assume what you will. Your tenure here was mercifully brief. 
The medical profession lost nothing when you left us. <laughs> no need to be insulting, matron. As neither of you have any official standing here, please move along. You'll note I'm authorized to investigate matters relating to the Diogenes explosion. It's nothing to me. The inspector has no standing among my charges, the quick or the dead. In any case, this is a solicitation for cooperation, not an order. A person in your position should not be guided by prejudice, matron. You've never thought much of my judgment or my authority, Mr. Holmes. Now, if there's nothing more, please leave. <laughs> I ask again, in a civil manner, for permission to see my brother. I am his only relation. I cannot allow sympathy to shift to my judgment. Mr. Holmes will not expire any time soon. There's no need to disturb him and transgress hospital regulations. <laughs> that tears it, Watson. It's war. Is change forbidden at Bart's? So it would seem. I feel transported <laughs> back in time. Indeed, to the Dark Ages or some similarly dismal and repressive era. No, no. To my days as a staff <laughs> surgeon. Mm, perhaps to the heyday of the Inquisition. A single glimpse of Matron the Merciless recalled a legion of disagreeable memories. I'd like to throttle the desiccated old bat. Render a valuable public service, but I doubt you would make the Queen's honours list for your trouble. How did you bypass this impediment? Via the morgue. It's the only convenient way to enter and avoid a night in the Bow Street locker. I trust you have no objection if we visit the coroner. You trust in vain. Dr. Watson has recently pestered him. I can't think of any reason why you should do the same. Watson, will this influenza become an epidemic? I don't know, Holmes, but any viral disease poses a serious risk even to the healthy. Hmm, in that case, a hospital is no place to be. Let us stay no longer than absolutely necessary. Excuse me, sir. What is your ailment? Stagnation at lungs. I'm weak. Then why are you languishing in this drafty hall? They're going to stitch up my head what I bashed when I fainted. So I got to take me chances. But if I get this new influenza, I'm for it. Sir, how long have you been unattended in this wretched hall? Well, bleed never, if you'll excuse the expression. No one tells me what's going on, I'm not furniture. <laughs> Matron, why is this patient forced to languish in this pestiferous hall? This hall is scrubbed daily. 
The patient and his insignificant ailments wait on the convenience of one of our most distinguished physicians. <laughs> By the time that worthy arrives, he may be able to add pneumonia or influenza to the man's symptoms. Tend to your own knitting, Mr. Holmes. We will attend to ours. <laughs> Have you conceived of a perfectly gruesome method for disposing of the brute? <coughs> Nothing so permanent, alas, but a diversion might serve us. She can't attend to her patients and her paperwork at once. Watson, I'm grateful that mischief is part of your makeup. The invalid might assist us. Would you mind? As long as I'm on it, I couldn't care less. Any change of scenery would be appreciated. <laughs> that patient must be retrieved. I won't forget this. You've earned trouble for yourselves. <laughs> Watson, I think we should take this opportunity to explore the bowels of Bart. I'm with you, Holmes. I wouldn't want to face her alone. Dr. McCabe, might I have a moment of your valuable time? Not so valuable that I can't afford to spend it as I choose. Can you tell me how Sir Hubert Fortescue died? You know better than to ask without authorization, Mr. Holmes. Thank you. It never gives me pleasure to deny or ignore your inquiries, Mr. Holmes, but things must be done properly. How many cadavers do you process in a given day? Too many. Please excuse me. I'm up to my elbows in work. Hmm. Not a terribly felicitous expression, considering your vocation. Perhaps, but accurate. Your visit had a point, I suppose, besides to criticize my choice of words. Excuse me, Doctor, I was rude. Your findings on Sir Hubert, please, Doctor. The official cause of death was asphyxiation. There is evidence of extensive brain trauma. And the laceration on his head? Occurred before death. It is not, however, the source of the brain injury. Typically precise and pertinent, Doctor. Flatterer. Now that you've had your way with me, you'll be off to the new ward, just like Dr. Watson. You'll pass from my morgue like snow in April. Hmm. Perhaps. But we all must travel this way again. We are all yours in the end, Doctor. Might I examine the body? Yes. I'll try not to take your request as a criticism of my performance. Might I see Sir Hubert's clothes? Help yourself. You know where I keep them.
What can you tell me about the burns on his back, Doctor? Mostly first degree. His tweed coat is as heavy as a horse blanket. Have you conclusions about the nature of the fire which killed him? I suspect a flash fire. Very hot, oxygen devouring, but its heat was not sustained. One that could burn convenient fuel, but move too fast to consume heavy furniture, and, forgive me, flesh? Precisely. Can the stench of carbolic be harmful to one's health, Watson? You're overly sensitive, Holmes. A morgue must be disinfected regularly. I rather enjoy it. Chacun son goût, as my French relations say. The rankest abattoir can be no worse. The morgue and a dental office have much in common, Watson. You mean that one ardently hopes to avoid visits to both? Exactly. One feels fortunate to emerge and vows to repeat the experience only under duress. This brings us a little further along, Watson. Not for the first time, Holmes. You have lost me. What do you mean? The manner of Sir Hubert's death is a key. My friend, perhaps you should rest. You're starting to ramble. Forgive me. Sir Hubert's death confirms your discovery at the club. The explosion's the important thing. Hello, brother. You're keeping well, I hope? Yes. Elephant ears, too inquisitive by our imbecilic, treacherous louts. Uh, those fools are playing at what? What? Oh, where are you? Sherlock? Calm yourself, Mycroft. I'm right here. Tell me why you summoned us to the Diogenes. No, no, no. It's safe. Joburg chaps, first rate, who died but was not born. Hmm. That's too obscure. What's safe? My brain isn't everything it might be, Mycroft. Nor is yours, it seems. What is it, Mycroft? What do you have for me? Where do you have it? Where's the heart? Shush, shush. Here's a secret. Sahara has none. Better than cursing the darkness. Come again? Mm, I'm so tired. Now I lay me down to sleep. Mm. Mycroft, do you recall Clifford, Ashley, Buckingham, Arlington and Lauderdale? A clique of intriguers. Are they back? Where? Uh, his incapacity is not permanent. He knows a cabal when he hears it. Now, Watson, the means to probe Mycroft's inner sanctum are in hand. Uh, his club's in ruins. He wouldn't risk his office. Home is where the heart is. He must mean he has something at his digs. I'd rather not get nicked for breaking and entering. I'll hardly be denied access to my own brother's flat. Do you imagine a senior minister's portal is more easily penetrable than Mrs. Hudson's door? As always, Watson, you make an excellent point.
I'm armed to do battle with Matron, Doctor. I trust you will support me. At your service, Holmes. We shall secure Mycroft's effects or die in the attempt. When Stevenson wrote that there is nothing like a little judicious levity, he might have added, thank heaven. Are you awake, sir? Do you know your name? Sister, I strongly recommend that this patient's vital signs be taken. You may be surprised by the result. Have you made anything of Mycroft's speech, Watson? No. I wish I'd read Freud's recent work more closely. Or perhaps the neurologists would be more informative. He can talk in symbols and anagrams and riddles, but conventional speech seems impossible. Were we not desperate for information, it would be entirely fascinating. But as we are desperate, it is aggravating. We must be inventive. Please retrieve my brother's effects, Matron, immediately. I'll take up your behavior with the director, Mr. Holmes. Your ruse has violated the essence of hospital policy. <laughs> Matron, this receipt is in order. Spare me the lecture and produce the effects. I know to the day age has not improved your intractable character. Allegations of theft or misappropriation would not serve the hospital. I'll sign for the key ring. You may keep the wallet and other items. What is your name, if I might ask? Colleran, sir. Bob Colleran. How may I be of service? Mr. Mycroft Holmes is my brother, Colleran. I'm sure he wouldn't mind if we waited for him upstairs. That would be out of order, sir. You are not expected, sir. Unexpected guests are not received by residents.
Scholar and I assure you I can be trusted upstairs. My brother summoned me. So you say. Have you not heard of Mr. Sherlock Holmes? He is our most famous detective. His cases are the talk of all London. I believe little of what I hear, sir, and nothing of what I read in the press. I should have identification which should entitle me to some consideration. Consideration, no. But if you can prove your relationship, perhaps an explanation is owing. Perhaps a modest inducement of a monetary type would open the door. Bribes are not in my line. Now clear off before I get tisty. You are some sort of government official, I take it? In a manner of speaking, sir. I'll appreciate no more questions along those lines. Let's just say I'm charged with the welfare of the residents here and their possessions. Very interesting. A car doesn't confirm identity, sir. It proves nothing except you've taken the trouble to have one made up. I don't recognize the character at the door. Be circumspect. I'll follow your lead, Holmes. There is something particular about that driver, Watson. You carry suspicion to excess, Holmes. He looks ordinary enough. Though his tailor is a good bit more skillful than mine. Unless I'm mistaken, he has a pistol in his pants. There are brigands everywhere these days. But not on Pall Mall, Doctor. Look him over, please. His posture is familiar. Could we go in now, Colleran? How did you come by the keys? Your welfare depends on your answer. There is no need to manhandle me. Are you a villain? No. Now make me believe that you aren't. Have you learned anything of significance, Watson? Perhaps. The driver resembles one of Lestrade's lackeys from years ago, party named Tallboy. That's right. I remember him now. Suggestions, Watson? I wish I had one, Holmes. I'm sorry. The brilliance of Pell Mell makes me feel duller than usual. Do you know my brother was injured in the Diogenes explosion? You've got my attention. We took him to Bart. I got his keys from there. I'm not at liberty to say more. If you don't, you may be without liberty, period. That sounded distinctly like a threat. As you like. My brother summoned me, Colleran, but the explosion struck him down before we met. I'm trying to discover the reason for his rare summons. He is currently unable to speak cogently. A more straightforward approach might have served you better. I'm still not certain who you are. I see you have lately returned from South Africa. 
I might have done. You worked in the mines at least a year, but not for any of the usual reasons. How do you know? Is it my voice? I fool most people. I observed you, Culler, nothing more. You are some sort of government official, I take it? In a manner of speaking, sir. I'll appreciate no more questions along those lines. Let's just say I'm charged with the welfare of the residents here and their possessions. Constable Tallboy, isn't it? Could I have a moment of your time? Yes, Mr. Holmes, though I'm no longer with the force. Would you be so kind as to vouch for my bona fides to Mr. Colleran? I wouldn't mind. These two is all right, Colleran. It's Mr. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. Done more than one good turn for me when I was with the CID. Thank you, Tallboy. Still at your appointed post, Tallboy? Now and always, Miss Holmes. It's good work, but not much of it. My clients prefer to walk. Please ensure we are not disturbed while we are upstairs, Colloran. Depend on it, Mr. Holmes. This is promising. Mycroft has devised a message for me. Indeed, but what does it say? What it says is obvious, Doctor. The question is, what does it mean? If you require refreshment, Holmes, let us retreat to 221B. Mrs. Hudson can prepare something more suitable. I'm nourishing my brain, Watson, not my stomach. I believe Mycroft has been experimenting with rice water.
Can you deduce a man's character from his furnishings, Watson? Well, domestic fixtures cannot define a complex personality, but certain traits may be inferred from them. Mycroft appears fastidious, intellectually rigorous, and intensely private. You never disappoint. Add willful, secretive, and lethargic to that list, and you have a serviceable thumbnail sketch. What captures your attention, Watson? Mycroft appears to work in his bedroom. Does he never rest? By nature, he's a slug. But when he's on the Queen's shilling, his relentless toil is the stuff of legend in Whitehall. Assume Mycroft has written something for my eyes only. Where might he conceal it? Mm, an office diary? Letters at his club? Too public. Too little control. Insufficient access. Well, here then, in a portable notebook or journal. A fair guess, were he not pathologically thrifty and compulsively secretive. To him, a common notebook would be an extravagance. Were he so inclined, he could write a novella, in his minuscule hand, in cipher, on an envelope, preferably used. The precautions Mycroft has taken are suggestive, are they not? If I completely understood what you were referring to, I'm sure I would agree, Holmes, as it is. I might have to take a headache powder. Mycroft has over-exercised his ingenuity to my detriment. Now you are talking in riddles. It's a most exasperating family trait. Persevere, Doctor. We know how he concealed his thoughts. We shall have to find the what and why of it elsewhere. Oh, you will certainly drive me to distraction if you continue to talk in that elliptical fashion. I'm faltering, wasting precious time. Perhaps Mycroft is now more lucid. Whatever you say, Holmes. Bart's is not too far away. I am not hopeful. Certainly you can live without a duplicate Bible. Quite right, Watson. I'm floundering. Not as sharp as I might be. Pleased to have seen you, Mr. Holmes. My best to your brother. I believe I understand the instructions.
Note the red tint, Watson. Mycroft used sympathetic ink of cobalt and saltpeter. Water sets up a chemical reaction, and heat causes the writing to reappear. It's pure po. The message reads, see books in Greek. Mycroft is a cautious man, but this message denotes more than prudence. Another layer of security. It's clear he feared foul play. But what does the message mean? See books in Greek? I'm not certain, but I've been a dunce. He has obviously prepared something close at hand. We must return to the source of this mystery. Come along, Watson. The game's afoot. Quite so, Holmes. Of course, the beginning, Genesis. Who died but was not born? Adam, I am a goose. Aha, he's done it again. If one puzzle is good, two must be better. Pleased to have seen you, Mr. Holmes. My best to your brother. As I recall, Poe liked Zaff and a diluted mixture of aqua regia for sympathetic ink. True. A green tint would prove it. But I don't believe Mycroft used an acid. It might be simple rice water. Well, how can you prove it? The proper vapor should provide us with an answer.
Yes, rice water by all means. Here it is, Watson, gradually appearing. I'll read it. Sherlock, you've likely heard all of what follows at the Diogenes. I've prepared a digest as much to assuage my anxiety as for your convenience. May you have better reason to consult it than indulgence of my suspicious nature, or that its source is unavailable for comment. Allow me to re-emphasize the central points. 1. The moment the formula was discovered missing, my committee mounted a confidential inquiry. 2. Without substantive progress, the members inexplicably moved to adjourn. They would have terminated the inquiry altogether had I not intervened. Given their recalcitrance, my hopes are not high that we shall meet again. 3. Items 1 and 2 give rise to two questions. Who stole the formula, and why did the committee quash the investigation? I haven't a clue to the answers. Regrettably, my committee members must be considered as prime suspects in both matters. They are Lord Dennis Lawton, Mr. Horace Silverbridge, Sir Avery Fanshaw, and Mr. Philip Bledsoe. After initially promoting an investigation, they suddenly claimed that no theft had been proven and that no vital information had been compromised. This is false. In unfriendly hands, this formula could have catastrophic consequences. Presuming the members are not traitors, idiots, or dupes, are they being coerced to make this patently ridiculous and dangerous claim? If so, by whom, and to what purpose? With respect to the theft, do not neglect ministry clerks, Thomas Pratt and Eldridge Whitney, and a feisty but engaging char named Agnes Ratchet. All seven have sufficient means and opportunity to remove the document from its restricted room. You must discreetly discover the motive for the theft. I remind you that you have no official standing, and I must insist on complete confidentiality. For the moment, even the Ministry must be off limits. Personnel should remain ignorant of your purpose, you may use no police resources, and you have no obvious leverage with the Committee. Your inquiry must be organized by my suspicions and your own observations and deductions. I trust they will be sufficient. You've often found my suspicious nature amusing and my penchant for clandestine measures absurd, so they may be, but as my current misgivings have devastating implications, I've taken these precautions in the event they may be well founded. Mycroft. P.S. Did I mention that Dewar is securely hidden in Bermondsey, typically oblivious? At last, Watson, we have material facts. We have relevant knowledge and a structure on which to pin it. This matter is highly confidential, Watson. Are you continuing your journal entries? Posterity deserves a record of our inquiry, Holmes, even if the current generation must be ignorant of it. I'm acquainted with none of the suspects. Do you know any of them? Lawton's is the only familiar name, but I'm not sure why. Perhaps we could discreetly trace them from the Ministry. For now, the Ministry is off limits, and police inquiries are, of course, out of the question. This summary will shape our investigation. We must deal with Mycroft's suspicions without the assistance of other agencies. Kelly's might locate some of the suspects. Have you seen it? Invaluable volume. It's around here somewhere, perhaps on the tea table. A team of archaeologists and a minor excavation might unearth it. Mycroft's behavior is emblematic of two poles of his character. He is perspicacious and lazy. What do you mean, Holmes? He was perceptive and rigorous to the point where his analysis would have required physical effort. He suspected danger and took precautions. He prepared an encoded briefing. He called for assistance, but now he lies in hospital because he miscalculated the danger to himself, and that he did because it would have inconvenienced him to act upon the accurate calculation. Typical. What of these other precautions? Who is Dewar? Professor James Dewar is a chemist at the University of London. I suspect he is involved in either the invention or the perfection of the explosives formula Mycroft mentions. Why hide him in Bermondsey? 
A formula is often more by way of signpost for a mixture than an explicit recipe. Mycroft may have reasoned that the inventor of the complex formula was at risk from those who stole the formula. Should we not check on him? Indeed we must, but he's not first on my list. Mycroft has already done what he could for Dewar. It's time we made a move, Watson. Carry on, Holmes. I'll follow your lead. <laughs> 